Hi, today we'll be looking at another required practical for AQA GCSE biology and that is factors affecting enzyme activity and today we'll be looking at pH in particular. We'll be looking at how different pHs affect how well an enzyme works. So our enzyme today is called pepsin. It is an enzyme found in the stomach usually. Um, digest protein, so it is in from the protease family. Now, that should get you thinking, ooh, enzyme found in the stomach, it must therefore have an optimum pH that is quite low on the pH scale. We'll see whether that's the case. Its substrate, so remember the thing that goes into the enzyme, is called albumin, and that is egg white protein. Basically, we can see it easily when it's broken down, so from this cloudy sort of color, it turns clear. And that means pepsin has digested it all. So we're looking at that at different pHs and how it will work. So what I've got here are test tubes labeled with the different pHs. What I'm going to do is then add the, al the substrate, the albumin, into each one. I'll add the, uh, the pH buffers into each one as well to make sure that they are of that pH. I'll then put them into a water bath to put, give them the chance to acclimatize to be at the same temperature because we know that temperature is another variable that affects enzyme activity. So we're going to keep that constant. We're going to keep all the volumes constant, of course. And then we'll crack on and add the pepsin and see how that affects it. Here we go. We're going to have five mil of albumin to each one. Now that that is done, we're now going to add some of our buffers, which is pH buffers, to each of those. Because it's acid and alkali, I'm going to use some eye protection. Just one. Now that I've done that, I have all the different test tubes there with albumin, which is our substrate. I have also the pH buffers added in, so they're all at the relevant pHs. I've given it time, a little shake, to make sure that they are all mixed in. Then I'm going to put them, as I said, into a hot water bath. Keep them at the same temperature of 40 degrees. Here's one I made earlier at 40 degrees. Okay, and here is our enzyme. And that's going to be added to that once a few minutes have elapsed. And then we're going to then time it to see how long it takes to clear. Now, clear a bit. Different pHs. Time taken for the solution to become clear. My units are there. Again, my independent variable. So what I'm changing is in the first column. And what I'm measuring, my dependent variable, is in the second column. So give it a bit of time. We'll be back in a second. Right, so those have now been in there for a few minutes, two to three minutes, just to acclimatize. They're all of the same temperature. Now, let's crack on with our Pepsin. So here's my Pepsin. I'm going to put one milliliter into each one, and then I'm going to start the timer. I'm going to look to see which one turns clear, and then I will put the time on. Results coming soon. So because the reactions happen quite a bit quickly, I just wanted to make sure I had the chance to concentrate. And for example, here are times. What I mean by going clear is, as you can see here, here's one tube. Um, this was the albumin before. This was the albumin after pepsin was added. As you can see, there's a slight there's a difference. Maybe I should do the whole clear thing again. And there you have it. Let's now try and plot a line graph using these values. 